to another Zombicide Black Plague painting tutorial. In this video, we'll be looking at Silas the Elf from the Black Plague core box set. Using the official war paint Zombicide Black Plague paint set from the Army Painter, as well as sprays and other hobby products. Let's start by having a look at the products we used in this tutorial. First, the miniature file set. We used Color Primer Army Green, and of course the Black Plague paint set as well as the core zombie set and the two expansion sets, toxic prison set and survivor paint set. We used the most water brush set and we finished off with a suit satin varnish for protection. The quality of the miniatures from the box set are excellent, but you still need to remove the mold lines using the files from the miniature file set. There's three different shapes, so finding the right file for the right job is easy. The next step is to wash all the miniatures in some hot soapy water. That way you remove any residue from the casting process, making sure that your spray and your paint sticks to the model when you start to paint. Being a typical wood elf, lots of greens and browns, we decided to start off with color primer army green. The level of acrylic hobby pigment in a color primer is unique and you need to use this spray differently from other hobby sprays. Start off by shaking the can gently for a minute and a half to really mix the heavy pigment inside. We stock Silas to a piece of cardboard for more control and to stop the model from falling over. Now we start to spray Silas from a distance of no more than 20 centimeters. Be careful to move the can at all times with good flowing moments. Turn the model to the side, making sure you get color primer even underneath the body. Finch off by holding the can upside down to empty the nozzle of old spray, making it easy to use the next time. And here we have Silas the Elf with his fellow hero colleagues being sprayed using different color primers. Remove Silas from the board and we are ready to paint. As I've done with most of the heroes in these tutorials, I'm starting with the flesh. I'm using the Survivor skin from the Survivor paint set. Sticking to the Regiment brush means I add a good amount of paste to my base coat. I'm base coating the face and the hands, giving each two thin coats to get a good coverage. Following that, I move on to the biggest area of the model, and that's the cloak. I'm using the Elf Green, from the zombie side, black plague paint set. At this stage, it's really just about getting some paint on the model. And for that, the regiment brush is still your best tool. Being an elf, Silas is clad mostly in greens and browns. And I carry on base coating the boots and the belts and the bow using the leather brown. To add some contrast to Silas's browns and greens, we're using the Abomination Red on Silas's dress. As you can see, I'm still sticking to my trusted regimen brush to keep up a good pace at my base coating stage. The next color is the Zombie Skin from the Zombie Corset. Now I base coat the quiver and other parts of the clothes, and I'm actually also doing the hair. Now the artwork in the Zombie Side game, Silas has red orange hair, but I like a sort of blonde Legolas type of elf. For some of the smaller bits like the scabbard, the pouch and some of the belts, I'm using the Necromancer cloak, also from the Zombicide Black Plague paint set. Here's a good example of where the regimen brush is no good. I'm using the insane detail for the tiniest bits, even at this base coat stage. And I finish off the base coat stage with the metallics. I'm using the Claymore blade for the sword, using the Regiment brush, and for the belt buckle, using the insane detail. And I move on with the bright gold to finish the sword handle. And with that, that's all my base coating done. The next stage is the shading. And for that, I'm using the deep shader. Deep Shader being an ink wash 
that's designed to flow into the deepest crevices and add that extra 3D shading. I'm painting deep shader all over the model, bar the green cloak. The green cloak is getting a 50-50 mix of deep shader and plate shader, making it sort of a dark brownish green ink wash. With the shading completely dry, it's time to add some highlights. The trick about highlighting is to leave some of the shaders showing through in the deepest recesses. Now the first step to highlight, I'm using the same colors as in the base coat stage. So here with the skin, I'm using the Survivor skin from the Survivor paint set. I'm painting on the very raised areas, like the cheekbones, the brow and the nose, and on the fingers. The next bit to highlight are the metallics. And I'm using Claymore blade on the sword and on the belt. As the metallic areas won't get a second highlight, I'm being extra careful at this stage. And now I move on to highlight the red areas, again using the same color as in the base coat stage, the Abomination Red. I'm using the Regiment brush here, since it's a fairly big area. Notice how I'm putting only paint on the raised folds on the dress, leaving the dark shading showing in the deepest areas. I carry on with this first highlight stage on the brown areas, again using my base coat color, this time leather brown. Whilst I'm highlighting the bow and the belts and the boots, I'm leaving some of the shaders showing in the deepest recesses while redefining the brown color with a new coat of leather brown. Next up is all the zombie skin areas. I start off using the Insane Detail brush for the flat areas. And then I move on to using the small dry brush on all the textured areas. Notice how the small dry brush is angled, making it really easy to use. When dry brushing, it's important not to have a lot of paint on the brush. You want the paint only to be left on the very raised areas of the model. Silas's shirt was left army green from the spray undercoat. And now, as I'm to highlight it, I'm cheating a bit and using the war paint's army green, that's a 100% match of the color primer, thus making it really easy for me to highlight. Now, I could have tried to mix it using elf green and some plague skin, but hey, I went for the easy option. I'm kicking off this second highlight stage with a 50-50 mix of Survivor Skin and Brain Matter Beige. With the second highlight, it's time to be really neat. Try to make very thin lines, and for that, you need your Insane Detail brush. You want this final highlight of the very bright skin tone only to be left at the very, very raised edges, like the knuckles or the very tip of the nose. For the Elf Green Cloak, I'm also using a mix. This time, adding some combat fatigue to the elf green. The cloak area is large, so I'm actually using the rich men brush for even this second highlight. Still trying to keep the lines fine and thin. I continue to highlight the necromancer cloak with filthy suit. Very, very thin lines down across the scabbard and on the pouches and on the belts. And for the feather pits on the arrows, I'm using my regiment brush using the dry brush technique. The dark red dress is highlighted with jumpsuit orange uh, towards the edge and on the very raised edges. All the areas with zombie skin I'm highlighting with pure brain matter beige. I'm using the insane detail brush, even highlighting every single strand of hair. And finally, I'm highlighting all the leather areas using the bony spikes from the Toxic Prison paint set. Again, the aim is to make only very thin lines on the boots and down the line of the bow. With Silas all painted, 
it's time to finish off the base. And I'm going to paint the base in the same fashion as all the other Zombicide miniatures in these tutorials. Starting off with painting the base filthy suit. With that dry, I take out my small dry brush and the Necromancer cloak, and I stipple on areas to represent sort of an uneven underground and dirt. The trick to the stippling technique is really to have only a little paint on the brush. It's easier to give it a second coat than to take away paint if you give it too much. And now it's time to add some old blood. I'm using the crusted saw from the zombie corset. Thinning the paint ever so slightly, I paint on pools, thinning the edges of each pool to sort of represent that the blood has seeped out into the dirt. And lastly, I paint on a few dabs of the gloss glistening blood to represent the fresh blood being spilled. We finish off the whole thing with a protective coat of satin varnish. Go outside, shake the can for a minute and spray the models from a distance of 30 centimeters. Note that that's longer than for the color primer. A few thin coats on either side, and leave the models to dry and your models are protected and ready for gaming. And that's Silas the Elf all done up, ready for some zombie side gaming action. Make sure you check out our other tutorial videos on the other survivors, on the zombies, on the necromancer, and of course, the abomination. Enhance your gaming and play with painted miniatures. Thanks for watching.